Hello and welcome to a brand new video on one of my favorite subjects, the E-Flight 1.3 meter Cherokee. Now, uh, the one you see sitting here on the, uh, on the table today was first introduced in July 2017. In fact, I pre-ordered this particular rare plane uh, as soon it would, as it was announced and I've been flying it ever since. It's been one of my absolute all-time favorite aircraft. I grew up around Cherokees, Warriors, Archer, uh, Arrows, spent a lot of my childhood flying around uh, in, my, in my grandfather's Arrows. So uh, this airframe has a, a kind of a special connection uh, to me. So when it came out in 2017, I just had to have it. But now that it is 2024, well, there's some new improvements that could be done for this aircraft. Sales have really started to slow off. If any of you are familiar with what happens when a new product comes out and then it kind of ages in the marketplace, the, uh, the sales begin to, uh, to drop off. And there was a number of improvements that the aircraft could have used. So the folks over at E-Flight had kind of a choice to make. They could either uh, get rid of the aircraft altogether, which would of course leave the, uh, the product portfolio without one of uh, you know, the most popular general aviation aircraft ever designed. In fact, it's one of the top produced airplanes uh, globally was the uh, the Piper Cherokee and that would be missing from the product portfolio. There'd be the Cirrus and we'd be without this wonderful flying airplane right here. Or they could go the other route which is keep it in the portfolio and make a few changes to it. There were a number of things that you know as the plane uh, lived in the uh, in the world that uh, people kind of complained about or noticed and there was some room for improvement. Such of, one of which was the uh, the prop was very large, it was heavy. Uh, the large diameter prop uh, looks correct, looks scale, I love how it looks, but it was susceptible to, uh, to ground strikes if you operated from grass or rough fields. Plus the heavy weight made it a little difficult to spin up and slow back down again. The, uh, the nose gear was very difficult to service. If you had a problem with the nose gear, if you had a really bad landing or you wore something out, it was just tough to kind of work on. Um, then there was also the, uh, um, the looseness back here that some people uh, really didn't care for. And on 4S, kind of caused a little bit of aerodynamic uh, flutter back there as well. So there was some room for improvement on the aircraft. Uh, a few years ago, there was kind of a version two that came out. The scheme was exactly the same, except for the AR-636 receiver was replaced by an AR-631 because the 636 wasn't available any longer. But there weren't any other changes to it. So there was a, this was the right time to do something new to the Piper Cherokee and bring it back out as kind of an updated and refreshed version. So let's go ahead and uh, let's take a look at that, shall we? All right, well here is the new and improved, the updated, the refreshed, however you wanna call it, E-Flight 1.3 meter Cherokee. So yeah, uh, first thing you're gonna look at is you're gonna see that um, it looks just a little bit different than uh, the one I had up here just a few moments ago, the original one. And uh, oh, 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 hold on one second. Sorry about that. Oh, look, at, we, have our, we have our first comment already. Typically you guys wait till I publish the video before leaving me a comment. Uh, let's see. Uh, sir, sir crashes a lot. Uh, it says, it's only new paint. There's no other improvements. This isn't new or different. Uh, okay, well, if you think that nothing is different on this airplane besides the paint scheme, then this video is for you because what we're gonna talk about today is the fact that there are a number of improvements that have been made to the the E-Flight Cherokee here that goes beyond just the new paint scheme. So we're gonna actually start off with some of those more mechanical and functional changes of the aircraft. And then we'll come back to, of course, the most obvious one, which is the paint scheme. So, all right, let's go ahead and let's start at the, uh, the front of the aircraft here. Um, you'll notice uh, that this prop is most certainly different than the original. So the prop is now a uh, smaller diameter, it is also uh, a little bit wider and it's a much more lighter weight prop. So this did a number of things for the aircraft, right? First of all, if you operate from grass or rough fields, um, that provides you a little extra ground clearance. It went from a 12 inch prop down to a 10 inch prop. So you gained, um, you know, you gained ground clearance there. So if you are operating off those kind of conditions, there's less likelihood you're gonna impact the, uh, the ground and cause yourself a prop strike. Um, mine has flown almost exclusively off grass for almost its entire flying career, and I never had a problem uh, hitting the ground with the prop, but I will most certainly tell you that it will uh, cut the grass very nicely, as I always had uh, grass stains on the leading edge of the, uh, the prop after a flight. So the smaller prop does give you a little bit more ground clearance. 
The other thing, this prop is also much lighter weight. And when that lighter weight means you can spool up that prop much faster and also will spin down much quicker, which kind of improves the flight uh, experience. So from a pilot standpoint, if you're flying both of these back to back, you would notice that that, that prop actually provides you a little bit better um, improved feel, a little bit better flight characteristics, and just a little bit better flying experience. Now to go with that uh, prop, the motor is exactly the same. The prop adapter has been updated, um, but if you are, uh, if you have the old Cherokee like I have, I have a couple of them actually, if you have that first generation uh, Cherokee and you say, I gotta have that prop because I really like the advantages I get from that, don't worry, that is uh, backwards and forwards compatible. So if you wanna take the new prop and put it on your, your legacy Cherokee to improve the performance of it and get you that extra ground clearance, you can go right ahead. I would also encourage you to order that uh, new prop adapter as well to go with it. It's not required, but it's just a little bit better material spec as well. So it's kind of a win-win um, if you wanna take your existing Cherokee and upgrade that. Of course, if you buy the new one, it comes with that already installed. The motor is exactly the same as it was before so that uh, you know that the motor will be you know work back and forth so they're backwards compatible the esc is also uh, a different piece for this particular aircraft the original one had a 50 amp esc and uh, it was 3s and uh, and 4s capable but that 50 amp esc was uh well suppose this way it was kind of at the uh, at the limit there of uh kind of the comfort zone what you would want for for an ESC in terms of amperage. So for those that kind of operate a little bit more on the edge of the envelope, a little bit closer to the extremes or want to have the opportunity to play around with different props or you get more aggressive in your flying, you're, you're, gonna, you're doing something that's maybe a little bit more towards um, the extreme, this has now got a 70 amp ESC in it. So just a little extra headroom. From an engineering perspective, we'd call that a factor of safety, right? 50 worked. 70 is just that much better. It just gives you that little extra cushion there at the top range. For the, those of you who fly on a 3S pack and uh, fly like I do, very sedate and calm, you probably won't notice any difference. But one thing you will know about that ESC, it's now smart, it uh, has the, um, the telemetry available too, and that talks to the, uh, to the, um, the receiver in here and then down to your transmitter. So you do get some telemetry. And no, nobody's forcing you to use uh, telemetry. It's there if you want to use it, it's available to you. A lot of times when it comes to these electronic systems, um, the, the things like um, voltage and amperage and temperature and a lot of these other factors are needed to kind of create fail safes and things inside of um, the electronic piece of equipment. So the telemetry really is taking data that was already there, already being used for the system and allowing the end user, the pilot, to access that data uh, themselves. So it's uh, it's not as if they're forcing you into it. You can make that choice yourself. If you want to use it, go right ahead. And if you don't, that's fine too. No one is forcing you to use it. I see a lot of comments. Uh, in fact, I'm going to try to get to a comment before someone dings me uh, on the video and say that they're being forced into using it. No, you're not. You can use it. Just like SAFE, um, you can use it or not use it. And this has the AR631 receiver, just the same as kind of the, the version 1.5 of the Cherokee. Um, it has the same receiver in it, and that does allow you to have AS3X as well as safe. And you can program it with without safe. You can do that during the bind sequence. You can also do that during uh, with forward programming. And it's up to you if you want to use it or not. Safe isn't just for beginners. You can use safe um, to help Love, keep the wings level, maybe on takeoff and landing if you're dealing with, uh, with strong crosswinds. Uh, helps reduce some of the workload of the pilot. It's also very useful in trimming the aircraft. If you go safe on, safe off, and the aircraft maintains kind of the same position in, in the air, then you know your aircraft is trim. If you've got an aircraft that's banking pretty hard or, or pitching up, pitching down, or doing something that's kind of, you can tell, you're really out of trim, you can use safe turn that on, the aircraft will self-level itself back out again, get your wits about you and try to figure out, okay, which slider do I need to move to correct it? You can make those changes, turn safe off and see, did I get the airplane trimmed right, yes or no? And you can use that as, an, as a trimming tool as well. So a lot of people think, 
Safe is only for beginners. You know, if you're uh, one of my typical commenters on videos, you say safe is for babies, uh, that is not true at all. Safe is a wonderful tool regardless of your experience level. It just matters how you use it. You can use it as a beginner, you can use it as an intermediate, you can use it as an expert pilot. It's there for you to use just like the telemetry, not required. So that recovers kind of the power system change that goes from the prop back to the, uh, the ESC and to the, uh, the receiver. Another important change to the nose of the aircraft is the improvement to the nose landing gear. So if you did have a really bad landing or you hit a hole in the ground or you just, you know, something went really bad on one of your landings and you damaged the nose gear on the original version of the Cherokee, it was very difficult to access. The screw was actually placed vertically uh, in, in the cowl and there was really no way to get to it. It was a, you had either had to cut a hole in it, you had to stick a screwdriver through there and hope you got it right. Um, it was just a very difficult way to fix that nose gear if you damaged it um, in a, in a landing. So that's one area that the flight uh, engineers and product developers looked at and said, we can make this better. If we're going to refresh the Cherokee, do some improvements to it. Let's make sure we address that because we know that is an issue our customers are having. So now instead of having a vertically mounted screw that you have to get to, you can actually get into it from the canopy, which of course releases just like the, uh, the original here, go ahead and, uh, Pull that off there. So you now take the screwdriver, and it's actually uh, like a hex, you know, hex head uh, screw in there. So you can use like a ball link, um, um, it's kind of like a screwdriver, but it's got the hex head on it. You can stick that inside there, an Allen key, and you can access it horizontally rather than vertically. So you don't have to take the entire nose apart. You don't have to cut into anything. No surgery required. You can access the um, the top of the nose gear, disassemble it, and service it. Uh, much easier today than you could before. So great example of how uh, you know eFlight is listening to what customers have to say and making improvements to the airplanes as they go. I mean, their options are either this, you can either uh, improve the airplanes, refresh them, keep them in the portfolio, or you can just kill them. And then people, of course, will complain that airplanes are discontinued uh, too quickly. So this gives an opportunity to make improvements, make the planes just a little bit better, listen to the customers on what they are saying, take those improvements, refresh the airplane, keep it in the product portfolio. Another improvement, this is more of a cosmetic improvement. Most of you probably won't even ever notice it, but trust me, if you've had a Cherokee as long as I have, you will uh, see the advantage of this. The top of the instrument panel on the original one was just black painted foam. And with the, uh, all this greenhouse, as we call the, the windows on the, the canopy section here, with all that open windows, uh, it could get very hot inside the, um, inside the cockpit. And that would cause the, um, the foam, that black foam, to kind of blister or gator or popcorn. There's a couple different ways you can call it, but it would bubble up and, um, well, it would look terrible. And there's really no way to fix that, right? It's buried inside there you'd have to cut the uh, the cockpit apart in order to fix that so what they've done and the same thing they've done on a few other planes as well is it now has a a black piece of plastic over the top which protects the foam and it won't bubble up and, and look bad so another great cosmetic improvement that they've done to this you know, aircraft and then just behind the uh the cockpit there behind the instrument panel is the pilot um and the pilot has had many nicknames over the years uh because the original one well <laughs> He, he looked a bit, uh, a bit questionable. So there's a new pilot figure that's in the aircraft now. He looks a little bit more realistic. The other guy looked like he may have been, uh, I don't know what his deal was, but he didn't necessarily look the best considering that the rest of the aircraft looked so good. Um, so it's a new pilot figure in there as well. And of course, the, we just talked about the improvements to the, uh, the instrument panel. So, all right, we've kind of covered some of those major uh, mechanical features of the aircraft. There's a few other little minor things they did here and there, tighten the tolerance there, adjust a little diameter there, you know, make a little improvement here, but all pretty just little minor things, just kind of like refreshing the tooling for the aircraft, just because tooling does get worn out. Speaking of that, we're gonna move back to the, uh, the end of the aircraft here, back to the, uh, the tail section here, and we're gonna talk about the uh, uh, stabilator and kind of what makes this a little, oh, Hold on one second here. We have a, uh, oh, we have another, uh, another comment here on, on the video. Let's see here. Um, let's see. This is from uh, grumpy sausage 82 grumpy sausage 82 says, uh, there's no such thing as a stabilator 
you are so wrong. You are a, uh, uh, oh, well, we're done reading that one. <laughs> Apparently, he got a little colorful uh, language there from uh, Mr. Grumpy Sausage. So, one of the more common uh, comments that I've received over the years on my uh, Cherokee videos is on the stabulator. Apparently, people do not believe that the stabulator is actually a real thing. So on a typical aircraft, you have a horizontal stabilizer and you have an elevator. The horizontal stabilizer stays uh, fixed. It does not move. It stays fixed with the aircraft and the elevator is what moves. It, that's what gives you your, your pitch authority. On the Cherokee models, the PA-28 series of, of aircraft, it is a full flying stabilator. It is a combination of an elevator and a horizontal stabulator, hence the name stabilator. So uh, for those of you who think I'm still wrong, which is pretty much all of you, I have here the, uh, the Cherokee uh, information manual, the PA-28 manual right here from Piper. And we're gonna take a look at, uh, let's see, section 77. Uh, oh yes, number 79 flight controls. The horizontal surface stabilator is of a flying tail design with a trim tab mounted on the trailing edge. This tab serves as dual function providing trim. Okay, so that basically confirms what I already knew and most of you don't believe I know is that this actually is a stabilator. And if you notice they called it a full flying stabilator. It is of an airfoil design. It does fully move. Now, if you are new to flying the Cherokee or new to flying an aircraft with the stabilator versus the elevator and horizontal stab that most planes have. Be aware that this is going to have more uh, pitch authority. It's going to have a little more pitch sensitivity to it. So adjust your your rates and expo accordingly, knowing that this is going to be probably a little bit different than what you're used to. So one of the complaints of the original Cherokee was that this area back here was very very loose. It would flutter around, and I think as the the tooling worn and as time went on you know, that probably doesn't get any, any better with, with time. So what they went back to, the engineers, uh, a dev product development team, went back and really studied that hinge area. And they looked at how to increase the, uh, the bearing area of, of the actual hinge, the pins that it, uh, it rotates on, and really look at that entire design and say, how can we improve it? And so they've gone through and did that and really tightened up that back area. So you'll notice a, uh, if that was something that really bothered you on the original, you will notice that this is a uh, definitely an, an improvement over where it was at. For those of you who fly 3S only, um, like myself, I never noticed it in the air. Yeah, you could feel it on the ground if you shook it around, but never noticed it in the air. Some guys who flew 4S and flew 100% flat out 4S and uh, really extracted uh, max performance out of the airframe uh, they were probably the ones who would notice something in the air versus uh, someone like me who flies on 3S. I never noticed um, anything with it, but I like having a little bit of a, of a tighter um, design on that. It makes the hinge just a little bit um, better. So, yeah, so from a mechanical standpoint, that pretty much covered um, a lot of the mechanical things. And the very last thing to cover, of course, is the, the paint scheme. And some people think that the paint scheme is the only thing that was done. Well, I think we've proven today that that is not the case, that there's more to this aircraft than just paint. So by doing these kind of, you know, refreshing the airplane, coming up with a new scheme, it looks fresh, it looks new. And to get this paint scheme, I kind of think of this to myself as the Rossman's uh, scheme, you know, from racing. If you followed, uh, you know, a lot of vintage racing, uh, Formula One, World Rally, and things like that. So you will recognize that uh, that scheme looks very uh, similar to you. So the product development team worked with a, a team of people and they looked at literally hundreds and hundreds of different schemes for uh, the Piper Cherokee because there are a lot of schemes out there. This aircraft is, like I said, one of the most commonly produced airframes in the entire world. There's a lot of schemes uh, to look at. The team walked around at, uh, at Oshkosh, uh, the EAA Oshkosh uh, Air Venture Show and took a look at a lot of different Cherokees. And then they took all their favorite schemes and they kind of balanced that between what looks you know, what provides the best visibility and orientation in the air, what looks kind of, um, you know, fresh and modern, but yet still classical scheme that you want to see on a Cherokee, what's a color that really hasn't been that, that done or that modeled, um, taking all these factors in and including such things as manufacturability. Some schemes are very difficult to produce in a manufacturing setting. So there's also that. 
uh, to go along with it. The tooling masking and things like that can be horrendously expensive. And so those go into the, uh, the same uh, kind of bucket of factors to tick the scheme. And then also, um, what can they do to kind of reduce the amount of uh, bare foam and get that right balance between the bare foam and paint? Now you could say, well, why don't they just paint it white? Um, well, that's a good question. Um, white paint, for whatever reason, is uh, is a very costly thing in the in manufacturing. So uh, and that's where the balance comes in to say, you know, in order to keep this airplane at enough at the right price point and provide the right amount of value to the customer, we're going to have to go bare foam versus uh, white paint. So the decision was made to uh, reduce the the, uh, the bare foam as much as possible, and that's why you see the uh, the blue paint on the bottom, including the bottom of the, uh, the fuselage here. So when you're looking up at the airplane and it's flying by, you're seeing more painted surface rather than, than bare foam. As you move up in price band, you can do more things and cover more areas with, uh, with paint, but it was felt in order to keep the price point at an acceptable level and really deliver that value that our customers are looking for, it was best to kind of go this route. And uh, I have to say, I really like this this scheme. Um, I think it's very it's very clean. Um, it looks modern, but it also looks very classic. And in fact, it is an actual uh, paint scheme. It's not the paint scheme assigned to these uh, tail letters. These uh, these numbers actually belong to the original uh, scheme Cherokee. But this is an actual Cherokee 140 uh, paint scheme that is still flown um, today. So it is not make-believe, it's actually real. It is a 140. This model here is a Cherokee 160. I thought a really cool, uh, classy thing is they actually put on the Cherokee 160 uh, font up on the nose there in that real classic 1960s vintage uh, Cherokee font. So thought that was a pretty cool, uh, nice touch on that. So. You also get the uh, the painted wheel pants with that, and of course, then you get the uh, the red and gold uh, pinstriping. And another nice thing they did is they added the 100 octane uh, low lead only um, decals around the uh, the fuel caps as well. So very nice little little touch there to kind of bring this uh, this airplane kind of up to modern standards, both uh, mechanically, electronically, as well as um, visually. So we thought this was only just a paint scheme. I think we've proven today that you were most certainly uh, incorrect. There's a lot more to this aircraft than just new paint. There's a lot of really, really great improvements. And hopefully this will allow the Cherokee to become available uh, to you for a lot longer period of time. I'm very happy that the, uh, the Cherokee is gonna be sticking around. It's one of my absolute favorite airplanes favorite airplanes to fly, favorite airplanes to look at. I absolutely love this thing. And I'm so glad E-Flight decided to uh, go the direction of refreshing and updating rather than just simply getting rid of one of my favorite planes. So if you guys got any questions on the new E-Flight 1.3 meter uh, Cherokee, leave them in the comments below. Hopefully I answered some of the, uh, the comments already, at least those that uh, are typically those angry comments that I get on my Cherokee videos, but I'm always happy to talk to someone about the Cherokee as I think it is such a wonderful airplane and one that I really love. So thanks for watching. Talk to you guys later.